Okay, today we're going to go over applying textures to your images. I've been getting a lot of questions lately, and some people are still a little confused on how to get this done. Um, I have my PDF file open of an image that I worked on for our camera club, and this is one of the textures that I applied. If you go back to the PDF file, this layer is this texture and when we want to add a texture to our image all we do is make sure both can be seen so here's our um, texture layer and I'm just going to highlight it and drag it and drop it on top of the image that I want it to cover so I no longer need this texture I'm going to go ahead and close it um, I had reduced the size of our of my picture so that video wouldn't be so large. So I'm going to need to change my texture size a little bit. I'm going to use Control T. That's Command T if you're on a Mac. And you see how I can't see the entire bounding box? Well, if you do Control Zero, it will show you the entire box. I'm going to hold take from my corner where you get the arrows hold the shift key down to constrain proportions and I'm going to just drag that in um, when you get the little arrows that curve I'm going to hold the shift key again and rotate so it goes straight I'm just going to pull it where I want it to be and just move it in so now I have two duplicate layers because this was the one I already had so let me delete that now that you understand. Um, most textures are just a regular JPEG image that you're going to add to your PDS format. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Let's see, let's make our image a little bigger. You can always double click on the hand and it'll fill your workspace. If we look at the bottom image, which is my background image, this is not a straight out of the camera image. It has had a, a levels adjustment done to it, but that's about all. Um, on the next layer, I worked um, kind of a sketch effect. If you zoom in on the brick, you can see it just kind of funks it up a bit, and that's kind of what I was going for on the, on the whole image. It makes our brick stand out a little more and you can if you highlight this layer and you look at your blend modes this is on soft light so all the dark of the layer actually blends through and still shows on our bottom image um, the process that I did next was to change the color of the sky let's scroll back out a little bit um, open hue saturation I'm going to select blue because I'm trying to adjust the blue in the sky. And I'm going to go up to the hue slider and move it over to the left till the sky kind of starts to turn an, an aqua color instead of that dark blue. Click OK. Now I'm happy with this. So I'm going to combine these two into one new image, which is what I have here. And to do this, you hit Shift, Control, Alt, and the letter E. And you do this all at the same time. And it combines all of your working layers into a new image. So this was what I had before. This is the new one. Let's just get rid of this one. And we'll keep the new one. So we don't need these two layers anymore. I'm going to highlight it. Right click and select Delete Layer and right click and select delete layer so now this is our new working format here is our painting texture that we have um, i'm going to show you kind of how what i normally do i normally open a bunch of textures pull them all in and just go through them and keep the ones i like and delete the ones i don't like um, you can see this layer is on multiply and my opacity is 52 percent so I will bump that back up to 100. There's a little scrubby slider right here that's kind of invisible. 
and put this back on normal. And when you're blend modes, when you open your blend modes and you click on normal, it tends to highlight it. Then you can just take your arrow keys on your keyboard and as I hit the down button, it will scroll through the different blend mode effects on that texture. And then you just go back and, and pick the one that you like. I'll go all the way through. There we go, luminosity. Now I know this was on multiply and so I'm just going to go back up until I get back to multiply and I'm going to change my opacity back to 52%. Um, I have a second texture added and I love what this one did. It brightened everything up. So on our doorway that was dark and on our windows that were dark, it lightened everything. Watch, I'm going to turn the eyeball off turn the eyeball back on. It added all this great grunge. And if we zoom in, now our, our shutter panels actually stand out. Let's zoom back out. Uh, I used one more texture just to kind of brighten it up a bit. On this layer, let me delete it and show you what I did. I took my working image and made a copy. So that's Control J, and that's Command J if you're on a Mac. And I just moved that layer up to where I wanted it to be before this last texture is applied. Now I'm going to sharpen it quite a bit. So I'm going to go up to Filter, Other, and select High Pass. I normally keep it on 6.5. I'm not going to adjust it. I'm going to click OK. And when you use the high pass filter for sharpening, you can either choose the overlay blend mode or the soft light blend mode. And on a portrait, I always choose soft light. But on a landscape image, you, sometimes you can get by with overlay. You may have to adjust your opacity a bit, but you're normally going to be okay. So I'm going to leave it there. Let's see. Oh, shucks. Let's go back. Sometimes it doesn't like when you try and scroll after you've changed the blend mode. If we zoom in and find a good spot, this was before we sharpened, and now this is after we sharpened. So you can see it made quite a bit of difference. Let's double click on our hand again. There's our image. Come on, mouse, work with me here. There we go. That's what I want to do. Um, the last texture that I applied, I used hard light. And you'll notice this layer and both this layer were both applied on soft light. And I tend to use soft light the most. It's just what I find most pleasing. But this one, I like the, the effect of it on hard light. So we're going to take all of these layers that we've worked on and combine them into one new image and we're going to do that again by holding shift control alt and the letter e and you hit that all at the same time so if we turn everything off turn the little eyes on our layer off scroll down a bit so this is the image that we started with which is our background image and this is now our final image. So we can actually take all of these layers. We can highlight this one. Go down to the bottom. And I'll hit, hold the shift key and click again. And it will highlight everything. I'm going to choose right click and select delete layers. So we now have our background, our old image, and our new image. Let's see what else we can do here. Uh, how about a vignette around the edges to make it stand out? Let me go back and show you exactly what I'm doing. Make sure you have some gray area around your image. I'm selecting the rectangle marquee tool, starting on the outside and just drawing till it covers the entire image and you have your marching ants that go around the edge. I'm gonna right click on the inside of the selection and choose feather. 
I'm going to use 125. Well, let's see, I reduced my size of the image, so maybe I'll go down to, let's say, 99. You see how it curves on the edge? That's where our selection is. Now, if we did anything now, we have selected the inside of the image, and we want to select the outside part of the image for our vignette. So you can go up to select and inverse. I knew it was up here somewhere. And you can select inverse. And you see our selection now shows those corners that we're going to choose. Um, the shortcut for that is shift control I. Everything will actually show you the shortcut if there's one available. And that's what I tend to use. That's how come I wasn't sure where it was. Let's get that back. So we're going to make sure our image layer is highlighted. We're going to hit Control J. It's Command J if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to change that blend mode to multiply. So that's going to darken that edge just a bit. So this was before our vignette. And this is after. So it just tends to, to add to the dramatic effect we're going for here. I'm going to go ahead and just merge that down with our, our working layer. And I'm going to do that by hitting Control e Command-E if you're on a Mac. The last thing I'm probably going to do is once you apply a bunch of textures, it will change the light and dark value of your image. So I'm going to do a levels adjustment one more time. And probably brighten it up just a little bit. Make sure that white part, white slider starts right where our black information starts. And I think I'm going to leave the black area alone. I want it kind of dark, but not too dark. Now, I'd probably go in and do some dodging and burning, but for the purpose of the tutorial, this is where we're going to leave it. Um, I hope you got something out of this. If you have any questions, just post them on the comment section in the blog, and I'll do my best to answer. Bye.